And uh, on the line with us, former U.S. Senator Arlen Specter. Former, actually, senator for more than 30 years, the longest serving senator from the state of Pennsylvania in that state's history. And uh, a fellow with quite a quite a, a fascinating political life. Senator Specter, welcome to the program. Thank you. Uh, and, good to be with you. And, and let me add, you have a new book out. It's called Life Among the Cannibals, subtitled A Political Career, A Tea Party Uprising, and the End of Governing as We Know It. Um, a fascinating book. I, one of the things I thought was particularly interesting in this in your book, Senator Specter, was how uh, how often and how well you credited your wife with uh, her role in helping you. Uh, like, for example, when Harry Reid introduced the resolution to pull your seniority, um, she said, "Wait a minute, you're Arlen Specter. Get out, you know, get out there and fight." I think so many so many successful men actually are in part there because they have a partner who has been so supportive, and yet they rarely acknowledge it. You've done a brilliant job in this book. Well, no doubt about uh, Joan's contribution. The thrust of the book is uh, my effort to try to uh, encourage the voters to come out in 2012 and uh, uh, end the gridlock in Washington. My uh, findings are that the extremists have taken over both parties, a strong senator like... uh, uh, Bob uh, Bennett in Utah with a 93% conservative rating passed one vote, and he's too uh, impure to win a Republican primary. On the other side of the aisle, Joe Lieberman uh, can't uh, win a Democratic primary. And uh, that has resulted in mem- members being unwilling to buck the party for fear that they're going to have primary opposition and, and lose their seats. And the experience of Senator Lisa Murkowski, I think, points the way that the senator can come back. She was devoured by the cannibals by Tea Party in the Alaska primary, and then she waged a write-in vote, which is extraordinarily difficult, virtually unprecedented. Know how hard it is to spell Murkowski? Yeah. Well, she proved that if you inform the electorate, uh, you can uh, get them uh, to support you, and uh, and uh, and beat the people on the extremes. Yeah, and uh, you know this is not a sudden thing. There are those who suggest that George Herbert Walker Bush uh, lost to Bill Clinton in part because the base was not active, and that the base was not active because he had voted to raise taxes, and therefore Grover Grover Norquist and his bunch basically took him down. The the pre pre uh, Tea Party folks. Well, uh, if the far right doesn't get its way, they're gonna. Uh, they're going to go home. Yeah. And uh, their way now is to have their candidates run on a platform of no compromise. And that's just not uh, uh, realistic. Uh, politics is the art of the possible. and Politics is the art of compromise. And the presidency always gets most of the attention, understandably. But uh, no matter who the president is, if you don't have a Congress at work, uh, the government can't function. And right now, it's uh, dysfunctional. It's just uh, stymied by the uh, partisanship and excesses of the people on the extreme sides, both right and left. You were the guy who went after uh, Justice Thomas during, now Justice Thomas, then nominee uh, Thomas, during his, uh, his nomination hearings with regard to Anita Hill, and, or one of the most outspoken people in, in, the, in that context. Now that uh, a fair amount of information has come out basically vindicating her, and, and Justice Thomas has demonstrated, uh, at, at the very least, an unwillingness to abide by the federal code of judicial ethics that every other federal judge in the United States has to abide by. Uh, were he any other federal judge, he would have been impeached or, or fired long ago. Um, I'm curious your thoughts on that nomination, that process, and uh, and the Supreme Court in general, Justice Thomas in particular. <laughs> well, you've asked about six questions, and they're complicated questions. Yes. Uh, uh, first of all, I think that the Supreme Court's position, that the individual justices can decide for themselves whether they should step out of a case, is uh, dead wrong. I think uh, that there ought to be a review process within the court. And I wrote an op-ed piece for the Washington Post on that uh, that appeared uh, within the past uh, past couple of weeks. When you talk about Professor Hill being vindicated, uh, I don't I don't think you're right. We had a very narrow question mm-hmm. as to whether what happened between uh, uh, 
uh, Professor Hill and Clarence Thomas was a disqualifier. Mm -hmm. And in 1991, we took up the issue of what happened between them 10 years earlier. And there's no way you can reconstruct that. He said, she said, no, no what right. happened. But, right. but I stand corrected. But the facts were uh, that she followed him. They were together at the Department of Education. He went to be chairman of EEOC. She took a job with him. Uh, she went out to teach at Oral Roberts Law School in Oklahoma, invited him to come speak. She drove him to the airport. She visited him in Washington. And my conclusion was that whatever happened, uh, was not uh, was not a disqualifier, mm -hmm. uh, but when you when you come up to, to the present time, I don't think there are grounds for impeachment, uh, but I think there are really severe grounds to question Thomas for sitting uh, on on cases like Citizens United, where uh, his wife works for a big uh, uh, lobbying firm that, that stood to benefit from the. Uh, horrendous ruling that corporations and unions could make unlimited uh, anonymous contributions. Well, and, and apropos of that, Article 3, uh, Section 2 of the Constitution that creates and authorizes the Supreme Court explicitly says that the Supreme Court shall operate under regulations established by Congress. Congress could easily pass a law saying, and, and, and the Supreme Court could not knock it down, it's right there in the Constitution, saying that the, the Federal Code of Judicial Ethics applies to Supreme Court justices, why don't they? Well, uh, because Congress doesn't get much of anything done. That's why why they don't. Uh -huh. Which brings us back to the main premise of your book. <laughs> well, well, what what you say? Federal judges are subject to the rule that they are disqualified if a spouse, for example, has a financial interest. Uh, but uh, uh, it's not uh, it's not enforced. And in the op-ed I wrote for the Washington Post, I suggested that when there's a petition for recusal, that is for the justice to step aside, that he has to write an opinion, and it's reviewed by the chief justice or a senior justice if the chief's involved. And if there's merit, it ought to be decided by the full court. The individual justice ought not to decide for himself. Now, the federal law we just talked about, which says that they're disqualified if there's a financial interest by a spouse, for example, uh, Chief Justice Roberts, in his year-end report, went out of his way to say that's never been tested. Hmm. Uh, and uh, uh, when you say Congress can pass a law, yeah, that's true, uh, but the Supreme Court has the last word. If they think there's... Uh, violation of separation of powers, uh, they'll strike it down. Well, at but, least they've but, had but, the last word since 1803, since the Marbury case. <laughs> well, that, that's right. <laughs> but, but Andrew Jackson in 1823, uh, or 32 rather, said the exact opposite. You know, he said, uh, Justice Marshall has made his decision, let him enforce it. So. <laughs> well, Jackson's doctrine has not prevailed, but yeah. just because the Supreme Court can have the last word, I think Congress ought to act, ought to put it to the Supreme Court. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, I think they'd be reluctant to declare uh, an act which uh, dealt with these issues unconstitutional. I've been trying to get the Supreme Court televised. Uh, yeah. I don't want to take too much away from you radio guys. No, that's fine. It, it, in fact, we're simulcast on television right now in 55 million homes. Well, I you, you ought to... You, 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 you ought to be simulcast with television. You have to wait until the end of the day, and only when the Supreme Court decides to be nice about it. That yeah. ought to be required, and I think Congress ought to pass a law there. Yeah, and they have the authority to. I'm, 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 I'm well, totally I think, with I think the Congress does. I think the Congress has the authority to deal on disqualification. Mm -hmm. But yeah. uh, I, I do realize that notwithstanding uh, Jackson's dictum, yes. the court has spoken, let him, let him enforce it, that the well, rule of law leads us to respect whatever the court does, however much we dislike it. Yeah. And I do believe that uh, judicial independence and that rule uh, ought to be followed, even though in specific cases I don't like it. Got it, sir. Life Among the Cannibals, Senator Arlen Specter.